Uh, hello, horror fans, and happy Women in Horror Month 8. Welcome to episode 3 of the yet to be named 13th Floor Bitches of Horror podcast. <laughs> the Shut up! up. <laughs> oh my god. Currently, it's being. <laughs> really? Is this how we're going to do it? <laughs> oh, it's you honest. say then. I can't do it. All right. All right, guys, this is uh, totally just off the cuff. I'm just, this is, you know, not planned. I'm, this is not written down. So, top of the dome. Currently, it's being labeled the LTTP. This is stupid. How about this? Without further ado, let's go ahead and introduce everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. All right, Jasmine, go ahead. What, from the beginning? No. I was oh. saying introduce Oh, we're ourselves. doing this. All right, it's Okay. <laughs> It's you know, we're keeping this. We're keeping okay. It. All right. Jasmine, it's All Jasmine right. today. Yeah. We got Jasmine Jeremiah. Dude. Wait, yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh shit, another Jeremiah. David, and oh no, no Sarah again. No Sarah today. Thank you, Xander. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah. So, yeah. so this yeah. week uh, we had like a fun, you know, top five thing going on yeah the uh the era one or are you talking about something else now all oh, the f- top five ones <laughs> yeah the era one exactly. <laughs> oh man this is the tipsy episode yeah three eras three eras like the three seashells but uh yeah it was quite hard but three didn't we do four i did five. Oh. He did a 90s one, and he also did the uh, comfort horror. Okay, because I, I wrote a comfort one, too. Okay. I thought that was a good one. <clears throat> All right, so do you want to start with uh, comfort horror? We can start with comfort horror. All right. Did you do well, one, Jeremiah? Yeah, I've got five of them. All right. You, but just right, so, I don't em- <laughs> so I don't embarrass you, I'll, I'll just do one. One what? One of my comfort horrors. No, you got to say them all. Oh, I thought you said you only had one, though. No, I got uh, five. Oh, okay, I, okay. I'll start okay. with my easy ones and go to my hard ones. So I got uh, Gremlins 2. Gremlins 2, okay. 1408. 1408. Nightmare on Elm Street. Nice. Uh, Ichi the Killer. That's comfort for you? <laughs> <laughs> and grotesque. <laughs> God almighty, woman. <laughs> Like, I seriously seen grotesque about twenty times, like not even joking. You don't even have to put that part. I believe you. I believe <laughs> everything you're saying right now. But it's it's mostly because we used to play a lot of drinking games, uh, and every time I did it with my friends, we always ended up watching grotesque. Mm-hmm. It was either like grotesque or Dude Was My Car. Those two films, <laughs> one of those, because you know Dude Was My Car is great for drinking games, and grotesque right. you just be like every time you see blood, and that's like every second, so you'd get like. Wasted in the first twenty yeah. minutes. Never seen grotesque. I really? was just about to say the same thing. What? Never. You must see it. It's so well, good. What's I it about? It. Give, give us a quick rundown. Nah, it's torture porn. Oh, okay. All right. So that's two, when did it come out? It came out two thousand nine, two thousand eight, two thousand eight. Oh, so it's been out for a while, man. Yeah. Damn. I think two thousand eight. This is nine, yeah. But it's it's um actually the guy who did uh, Sadako versus Kayako. Ooh. That that's why I was looking forward to it. He's also the one who did a uh, Noroi and uh, the occult and cult and all those sort of mockumentary ones. You see the Ring versus the Grudge. I don't want to say the 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 other title because I'm just gonna butcher it. But um, yeah, the the Ring versus the Grudge, man, I hated it. So you, you're not you're not selling the grotesque for me here. Telling me but it's nothing thing. like that. I mean, it's nothing like that. But it, it okay. is it is like torture porn. Like one guy k- kidnaps a couple, mm-hmm. and he basically tortures them the whole movie. Oh. Uh, but it's really good, really good effects. And uh, the killer, he or the killer, the torturer, he's like really stone cold, mm-hmm. no expression sort of type. And I really enjoyed it, at least. I just pulled it up on Letterboxd, and I think this is the only movie I've ever seen Sarah give one star to. <laughs> <laughs> She'd give it one star? I thought she liked it. One star. Maybe <laughs> like maybe this was like one of her first Letterboxd reviews, and she thought maybe. one for best, and five is... <laughs> <laughs> 
Really? Oh, wow. I guess I'm not friends with her anymore. Yeah. Man, <laughs> David just exposed her. No, that's I'm sad. So, so you guys watched it together? No. I was gonna say because that be... before me and Sarah were friends. She, she put one face like while watching it, and then as soon as you guys were done, she's just like this piece of shit ass movie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what? I love that film. Anyways, yeah. So what are your what are you guys' comfort films? All right. Um I've got Reanimator, Terror Vision, uh Night of the Comet, Poltergeist, and Psycho. And I think out of all of those, the most comforting would probably be Terror Vision. I haven't seen that. You have to watch that. Oh man. But it depends. It, it it feels like uh, I don't know how to explain. It, it feels like Pee Wee's Playhouse on crack. <laughs> it sounds. Uh, it's just it's uh, it's yeah. I don't know how to explain it. There's an alien invasion thing, because the the father like gets this new satellite system, and it actually like you know he gets a signal that allows an alien to travel through the airwaves into their house, and aliens like eating everyone. But it's so goofy, and even even if it is like, oh, they're they're melting and it's you know disgusting. It's so like I don't know. It it doesn't take it so serious at all. It's really cheesy, and you could tell they're just having a lot of fun. So, I've yeah. watched that movie and I've fallen asleep to it, you know, a bunch of times. Not because it's boring, just because it puts me in a happy place. That's pretty <laughs> much where we came up with the term from yeah. that movie and they live. Yeah, exactly. Oh, dude, they live. Yeah, that's like yours. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's Mary exactly. Mary Warren was in it. I like her. Who? Oh, Mary yeah. Mary Warren was yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a good movie. Yeah, get on it as soon as you can. Watch it. Will do. And David, so what's yours, man? All right, for me, I had Night of the Creeps, Return of the Living Dead, Night of the Demons, Terror Vision, and They Live. Mm. Which, yeah. They Live and Terror Vision, you could flip-flop for, like, the number one spot easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, th they live is a freaking masterpiece. I actually saw that for the first time like two months ago or something like that. Damn. But it, I liked it. It's good, right? Yeah. What about that fight scene? Dude, that's what, a... uh, in the uh, alleyway. <laughs> it's so there? drug out. It's so it's so <laughs> unnecessarily long. It's like <laughs> it's like the Family Guy chicken fight, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Do they even say like Carpenter and the like making or yeah the making of feature on the Blu-ray? He's like saying how he just like kept letting him go and like wanted it to be like the most ridiculous, crazy. They were even like telling him like this is way too long, and he was like, no, just keep going, keep going. That's freaking awesome. <laughs> so weird, John Carpenter. Like, he's I love him, but he's really strange sometimes. He has these like weird things. Hmm. What's what's an example of one of his weird things, Jasmine? Oh, that right there. I mean, that he like. Oh, just let them fight. Yeah, like sometimes he's like super serious about things, and then sometimes uh -huh. he's just like, oh, well, it doesn't matter. Just you know, let them keep going. It's fine. You can fight until the end of time, sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> he's supposed to be like real serious, right? Because I know, like in interviews and stuff, like he doesn't want to be asked about like Halloween and like other movies and stuff. Or I heard something like that. Yeah. Oh man, if that's true, that's excuse me. Yeah, that's a, like kind of a killjoy. Yeah, they said he was like that, but since he started, like, doing the touring, like, off his music and everything, like, they said he's, like, kind of happy again. But that's how he got, like, he was so <laughs> sick of, like, talking about all his old movies. He found his marbles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's got to be quite, you know, annoying after... I, I, like, I wonder how Robert Englund does it with Nightmare on Elm Street. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, he's not known as anything else than Freddy, basically. Yeah. Because um, he was ha when I when I met him, I I wanted him to sign House and uh, sorry, um, 2001 Maniacs. Mm -hmm. And he was like, oh, what this one? And I was like, yeah, because you know, I love it. And he's like, oh yeah, and I hardly you know get to sign anything else than on Elm Street stuff. Yeah. And also, I talked to him about his film 976 Evil. Oh, and man. he got really, you know, he was like, oh really, you liked it? I was like, yeah, I loved it. That one was also one of those weird, mm -hmm. fun movies. But, I haven't yeah. seen it yet. I still haven't seen that movie. It's cheesy, but it's good. Yeah, but that was one of those movies. Uh, see, I don't know, like, if you grew up with, like, those kind of mom-and-pop video stores where 
you know, you had to pick a movie based on how awesome the art on the, yeah. the box was. So, yeah. yeah, that was one of the ones I kept, okay, next time I'm getting this one. <laughs> next time I'm getting this one. So, but yeah. Uh, is it good? It's You said it's kind of cheesy? It is, but it, I liked it. Mm. That's got nothing to do with, like, Evil Evil Ed or anything like that, does it? No. Have you seen Evil Ed? No. That's like Swedish Splatter Pride. Really? It is. It's great. Okay. On the wish list, it goes. <laughs> it's really weird, but it's great. All Swedish things are weird. Yeah, kind of are. We don't really have that many good horror films, though. Like, that's, like, one of the few I actually enjoy. That came out in, like, the 90s, right? Yeah, the beginning of the 90s, I think. I don't think I ever saw it either. <clears throat> I can bring it when I come over. Yeah, do. 95. Bring it, and we maybe might watch it. Yeah. After Creed. After Creed. <laughs> <laughs> A back-to-back. Yo, it's not good. I'm sorry. But, uh... Yeah, we'll, we'll, that's like a whole podcast worth of conversation. <laughs> yeah. Creed somehow uh, manages to find its way into uh, each time we start this conversation about anything. Yeah. That's fine. Let's move on to um, Golden Age. Uh, wait, did we do the PG already? No, we just did Comfort. Yes. Okay, and I'm an idiot. I have to actually explain what these things are. Uh, although I guess by now you you know people who are listening would figure out what comfort horror is, but the way I have it in Letterbox, let me see, it says uh, basically comfort horror is a soothing lullaby of screams and terror, the kind of horror film that calms and warms you, a cinematic glass of warm milk. So I think that explains. That sums it up good. what Ichi the Killer is for me. Yeah, there's warm glass of milk thrown all over the place in the beginning of that movie. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm talking about Age of the Killer today when you didn't know that the semen is real. Yeah. Wait, Did what? you know that? Yes! In the, in the beginning, you know, when he, like, comes on the plant, that semen on the plant is real? Because <laughs> he, he, like, couldn't get the right texture. He didn't, you know, he couldn't get it to look real enough. So he was just like, ah, eh, fuck it, and they used real semen. Oh, that's great. <laughs> and then I was kind of thinking, like, whose is it? Like, is it his, or did he, like, buy it off someone, or did he just, you know? Yeah, I was going to say, it's probably his. He just want to jerk off onto the, the uh, plant. <laughs> and everything. Yeah, maybe. Gross! Anyway. Yeah. That's Moving Tekashi. Uh, 80s golden age, golden age. 80s golden age. Okay, so, yeah, that would be the... Let me see, where do I have that? Yeah, slashing, stabbing, mutilating, biting, bludgeoning, with a smile and a wink. So basically fun horror movies, you know, the ones that are, uh, they, they know, they're kind of self-aware, they're having fun with themselves, so what do you guys have? Start David. All right, this one was tough because pretty much like I wanted like a Freddy movie, a Michael Myers movie and everything, so I just kind of picked my favorites from everything. Mm -hmm. I went with the original Child's Play. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, the first movie, just because pretty much that was the first one I saw, and that's always going to be my favorite one. Um, Halloween Part 2, Friday the 13th, the final chapter, and Evil Dead 2. Yeah, Evil Dead 2 is like the most obvious freaking pick. It's yeah, my... mine too. <laughs> yeah, mine too. Yeah, that should stick out right away to anybody. Um. Yeah, I, let me see. Mine are um, American Werewolf in London, Evil Dead 2, Fright Night, Return of the Living Dead, and uh, what the hell is that? Brain Dead. Mm. Damn, I forgot about Brain Dead. Yeah. Yeah, Brain Dead's a good one, dude. Yeah. Did you ever? You haven't seen Bad Taste yet, right? How have you not seen Bad Taste? Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, first of all, he <laughs> asked. He, he didn't. See it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seen, well, I'm I assuming. See, okay, I saw it like ten times. Really? Mhm. Mm oh, okay. Yeah, I saw it. I thought you didn't see it. Yeah, yeah, I've seen it years ago, years ago. There, uh, I have to rewatch it because I'm fuzzy on it. But this is the movie where the dude's brain is falling out, right? And he keeps trying to put it back in, and. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. So yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I did see this. Yeah, that movie was amazing, and I it was crazy too because I saw it uh, when Lord of the Rings had just dropped, and then I realized it's the same director, and I was like, why is he making Lord of the Rings when he's yeah. making amazing horror movies like these? I, I've 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 always wondered like how he actually got the job like to make Lord of the Rings after yeah. making Brain Dead and Bad Taste and Meet the Feebles. It doesn't make any sense. No. It doesn't None make whatsoever. any sense. No. Uh, and I, you know, I'd wish he'd go back. Now when he actually has like the money and the reputation, he should definitely go back to horror and make some really good ones. You think it'd be any good, or would it be just oh, CG probably not, best? but maybe. Yeah. If he went back to his like old roots, then definitely. You know how these guys get. Sometimes they're too big for their britches, and they're like, ah, I'm, I'm past horror. Yeah. Still up. Past horror. There's always. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. I felt like that with Sam Raimi for a little while. Yeah, his they, stuff he, got kind of bad. Yeah, he kind of redeemed himself a little with um, Drag Me to Hell. That was like his first kind of, hey, he still got it. The first time I, did, I watched it, I didn't like it. The second uh -huh. time, I loved it. Yeah. Oh, I love that movie. It took me like a while. To... He did a few uh, Ash vs. Evil Dead episodes too, right? Or just like he... the pilot? He definitely did the pilot, and I think he did the first episode of another of the second season, again. Not I might direction. be I might be wrong. No, I'm not on okay. Only the first episode of the first season. Yeah, I'm not sure if he wrote it, but he he directed only the first one of the first season. His you can you can see his fingerprints on the first episode. Like it's obviously Sam Raimi, you know. Yeah. Those crazy close-ups. The the. The way the camera moves, it's like real dynamic and everything. And then it kind of, uh, after that, mellows out a bit. I th didn't he do the first two? I thought he did. Not, like... not according to IMDb. Mm. Okay. I don't know. Well, then the second episode's a really good imitation. I didn't know he did The Gift. I like The Gift. <clears throat> he made The Gift? What? Raimi did The Gift? Yeah. Billy Bob wrote it though, but <laughs> <laughs> that's an interesting pair up. Yeah, but I, I like that film. Yeah. I don't know. Then again, Raimi making that... Spider Man is kind of interesting too. So that's the one with yeah. Jason Oz. Bateman, right? Uh, the gift is with. Uh, no, that's the one. No, you're talking about. Um, I think there's another one called The Gift. Oh, okay, so it's older. I was going to say, because yeah, I this hate is the one that. with Kate Blanchett and uh, Keanu Reeves and Giovanni Ribisi. Oh, Keanu okay, Reeves okay. like this really, really bad, like, woman beater. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I thought you were talking about the new one. The, everybody loved that movie, and I didn't like it. I haven't seen it yet. I've been wanting to see it, though. Yeah, I wasn't crazy about it. I haven't seen it. <clears throat> uh, yeah. All right, My so... One. I yeah, got go Nightmare ahead. on Elm Street. I put one out of three just because – into one because I love both of them. Uh, bad Taste, Critters. Critters. Evil Dead 2 and Deadly Sh Eyes. Critters is such a good pick. I love Critters. I yeah, that's that's definitely a good one. Um, Matter of fact, I just saw that the, um, maybe a couple weeks back with my dad. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Oh, man. It was – we kind of just were like, you know, halfway already asleep and just kind of, oh, we need something. Just throw something on. And um, I was looking through his collection. He's not a he's not a horror guy by any means, but um, he'll have some things that are just, you know, I don't know how they made their way into his collection, but like Chud and stuff like that. Yeah. And he had he had Critters on there. So I was like, hey, let's watch Critters. And he's like, what's that? I'm like, what do you mean? You own it. So we threw it on. Apparently he ain't even seen it. Oh really? So good. I love it. Yeah. I wanted, yeah, I wanted a... to do like a like a marathon with all of them because I haven't seen them in so long. Well, there are five of them, right? Four or five? Yeah, four I think. Part four, yeah. Five. I think yeah. I only saw like the first three. Critters in Space is part four. <laughs> yeah, that's. I always wanted to see that one. I never saw it. I own it. I actually. With Leonardo I... DiCaprio. Get out of here! He's in it. In the third one. Oh, I'm like I, he, I don't remember him in the space one. No, not the space one. Uh, and the third one, he's like the little boy. He's a kid, yeah, 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 yeah. 
I was like, that would have been badass if, like, the continuation, they brought him into space, he's, like, an astronaut or something. That would be great. <laughs> I, usually all these, like, space ones are really bad. Hey, Jason X is, like, I best shit ever, hate man. that shit. Oh, my God. <laughs> when I watched that, I wanted to just kill everyone. I was like, what is this? It's so bad. It's so bad. All right, That's I'm like out of <laughs> it does have like one of the best Friday the 13th like kills of all time though. I'd say two. I'd say there's the the but one good where kills they do this... doesn't make it a good movie. Listen, let's stop for a second. Let's not get crazy. <laughs> we got the virtual reality kill, right? Where he takes the the chick in, in the sleeping bag and slams her against the tree. That was freaking awesome. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I hit my mute button. Sorry, guys. <laughs> All right. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Unless you pushed it again. Yeah, sorry about that. We're going to have to <laughs> – what the fuck? Just... Dude, I have a headset here that's like if you breathe on it, the volume will go up or down or, or mute itself. So I'm like, oh, okay, this is nice. Everyone just bounced on me here. I'm talking to myself, like, hey, guys. All right, so I have no idea what I was saying before. You just but... said slammed against the tree. Yeah, slammed against the tree with the sleeping bag. So. Yeah, that was like a throwback to, shit, I can't even remember, part six. Uh -huh. One of them. It was like five or six. It was five. I think it was five, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was that that was one of my favorite ones. And then of course the freezing the face. Yeah, that was so good. That like uh whatever that liquid Yeah, but then stuff, when he's nitrogen. like outside in space, like swimming around. I just wanted to burn. <laughs> I was like this ain't this ain't no. Just no. He's not meant for space. He's not meant for space? <laughs> he it feels like ass. those uh sci fi channel movies. Oh man. That's what it reminds me of. Because I rewatched it like this last Friday the 13th. I tried to watch like the Friday the 13th movies. I don't watch that much. Right. And I did uh, Jason Goes to Hell, uh, Manhattan, and then I did In Space. And In Space is like Sharknado, like all those movies that are like crazy popular now. It was. It reminds me so much of that, like the early times. Okay, I will say like three things to that movie do feel like I could have done without. Uh, the robot chick kind of gets on my nerves. Uh, the soundtrack in that one is terrible. It's got this like really synthy oh, yeah, kind yeah. of like video gamey music that just takes me out a lot of times. Um, and then uh, just the the design of the ship itself is kind of corny. It's kind of got that. It looks like a it looks like a a porn spoof on like Star Wars. Yeah, there's so, like no life to it. Yeah, there's no life to it. It just and there's you know they got the typical a board of lights that are just randomly blinking, so it's not really. You can see the budget's not not there, so. No. But I enjoyed it anyways. Yeah, you. Team, would. team Sarah. Mm-hmm. All day. Always, no one's ever on Team Jasmine. Well, you gotta pick right. good movies. I got good movies. Man, Critters, <laughs> come on. Yeah, Critters is good though. Yeah. All right, so uh, moving on to the top five Attitude Era. And that would be the period of time in the early 2000s where horror went for the throat, tore it out, spit on it. Uh, God almighty. You know, I really hate Litterbox's uh, summary things. <laughs> and like, I'm like, oh, that's all I wrote? No, it says click here to read more. Uh, Pete on it, found your mother, took her out for a steak dinner, and never returned her calls. Actually, now in retrospect, probably didn't even eat all that. Of course you did. <laughs> So, yeah, it's mean, 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 and flashy as all hell. So I guess I can start my list here. Uh, first one I got is The Hills Have Eyes, which, I mean, that's about as mean as it gets, right? Mm. Yeah, I remember the uh, the scene I had trouble with. I have trouble with, like, rape scenes in general. So when that one dude with, like, no teeth came into the uh, uh, into their part trailer... Part. Yeah, and the, like the teenage girl was in there, and he's you know having his way. I kind of got really uncomfortable, and I was like, "Damn, this is a this is a strong ass movie." 
Yeah, that's a really harsh one. But I think in the second one, I think that that scene is worse. Really? I, like, you know, I don't that, even remember the second I was, one. I was just going to say, I haven't seen the second one in so long, I don't even remember that much about it. I remember that scene, like, it, like on the table. And, like, just this tiny little girl against this, like, giant demon. Damn. <laughs> and that was uh, pretty bad. Yeah, the gore, too, was pretty crazy. You know, also, the thing I'm watching it again, um, I like that it, there was a lot of practical effects in this. Yeah. So this was that kind of... Yeah, they were still doing it back then. Yeah, like, that's what I like about the movies that fall in this category because, you know, nowadays everything is CG, right? You know, look at The Conjuring. Well, we could talk about The Conjuring later. It's but not we all, we all thought it was CG. That, yeah, uh, the second one. Turned out it wasn't. But, um, so, the you know, but all these movies, there's a lot of practical effects. So it's a nice carryover from older movies. And then, you know, it's got the flash of, you know, these higher budget stuff that comes out nowadays. Yeah. So yeah, Hills Have Eyes is definitely a good example of that. And then um, have Dawn of the Dead, <clears throat> the remake, obviously, uh, Zack so, Snyder's movie. Actually, I think that's one of the few Zack Snyder movies I like. I know I'll get crucified. No, I don't for... think he's that light though. I think he is. I think the unpopular thing is to not like Zack Snyder. Maybe. Maybe. I guess it depends who you're hanging out with. The Descent is my the third one that I have here. And that one was brutal as hell. That was a tough one to watch, especially since um I'm also claustrophobic. So the monsters themselves weren't even the scary part. It was the fact that they were just like stuck in these tiny caverns and crawling through these like crevices and things like that. I was like having a panic attack. The monsters just added, you know, added to the fear. Yeah. You should, uh, you gotta Wait. watch it as above, so below. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's not... Yo, did you see, did you like that movie? Because I know you've seen it, right? Yeah, I, I mean, for, like, a PG-13, like, studio-produced found footage movie, it's would easily be up there with my top, like, found footage movies. It's just, it's just more because, like, the, it's all about, like, the catacombs. Mm -hmm. And, dude, it's so sick because it's, like, they're crawling around. Like, everything's made out of, like, skulls, and it's, like, actually filmed down there. Yeah. So it's a lot of those, like, they climb up into, like, small areas, and then they're stuck in there. And they don't show, like, a lot of, like, the monsters or anything. So, it, like, mm -hmm. leaves a lot. So Damn. it's pretty legit. Yeah. Have you ever beat Assassin's Creed Unity? No. Oh, then never mind. Well, I'll I got say... it for a dollar, so... <laughs> yeah, now's your chance. Yeah. The um no, at the end there's uh it takes you through these like catacombs and um uh, it's like completely built out of like skulls and skeletons and oh. yeah, so that's what you were reminding me of. I was see if I didn't know if you had played it or not. Oh shit. So, I got that and then uh the other two movies I had on my list were Saw and you know, what else can be said about that one? Hasn't been said already. That shit is about all the cool ways we can kill people. So that fits perfectly. And then... Yeah, yeah no, go ahead. What happened? No, I think the first one is just... I never really think of the first one as that. Mm -hmm. I always think of the first one as, like, one of the biggest mindfuck films. Like, ever. Okay. Yeah, you're right. It's not a... It's not like the second it, one or, like, right. the ones that come after that are just basically about that. So it's kind of like the first one is, uh, you know, it's an actual movie movie, right? Yeah. With a nice plot and everything, and then kind of nice twist at the end. That twist. Yo, but that yeah. twist caught everyone lovely, dude. I saw, it, I saw it in theaters, like, opening night, and people were, like, standing up and, like, losing their minds. <laughs> okay. I saw it with, with my cousin, and when that part happened and everyone's freaking out, he was looking around like, what the hell? What? What? I don't get it. What? Like, yo, <laughs> completely did not even catch he's like okay the guy's getting up and what <laughs> damn this is the same cousin by the way that was uh, didn't like Mad Max uh, because they never got out of the desert <laughs> <laughs> don't I'm not dropping any names <laughs> but uh yeah you know how it is so then uh, <laughs> we got the uh, the next movie I have the last one on this list is The Devil's Rejects 
Yeah. So, I think I think that's a pretty good. What would you say? It's a good it's list, a right? Good list. Yeah. I don't like the descent, but the rest are good. It's good. Yeah, because you're weird. But anyway, so. I think so though. I might have to rewatch it though, because I I've only watched it once, but I did not like it when I first saw it. Why? Okay, what do you remember not liking about it? Uh, the characters. Yeah. And just the way it like proceeded. Annoying and bitches. The ending. I hated the ending. <laughs> oh, the ending. Well, which yeah. version did you see? The U.S. version or the international version? I don't know, man. That was you a long the, time ago. I watched two that. Two different endings. Mhm. Mm yeah. You have to tell me offline. I don't want to spoil the end. Just All in right. case. But um, yeah. Go ahead and, and what's your list? I got the Hills of Eyes remake. Remake. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that one. Uh, American Psycho. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Oh, my God. That's one of my favorite horror <laughs> movies. You know what? Any kind of movie, any genre. That's one of yeah. my favorites of all time. 2001 Maniacs. Mm -hmm. uh, House of a Thousand Corpses and Hostel. Hostel's a perfect pick. Yeah, Hostel like, kind of came out of nowhere, I think. And, and, like, Eli, know, Eli Roth kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah, I didn't. I I never, you know, I didn't see Cabin Fever back then, but mm -hmm. Hostel was, you know, so talked about. So I watched that, and yeah. it was just kind of too real. Yeah. Well, it it is based on real shit that goes down, right? Yeah. So I mean, well, there you I'm go. I'm not sure how based on you know true stuff, but it, it know, was on the internet, so it's that, true. That could definitely happen, you know. Rich yeah. people, you know, have the money. You got yeah, money, of you can do anything. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure if you can imagine it, it's happening somewhere. Yeah. Probably Japan. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> surprising. I feel right. like Hostel doesn't get like any, like I don't know. I feel like everybody hates on it now all of a sudden. You know why? Because like torture porn got played out. Yeah, I but, think that's what it is. But yeah, it, but it's because Hostel was good, and then everybody tried to like copy it. Yeah, probably. But yeah, that doesn't make sense. Then why I hate Hostel? I think I think I think that people started to hate Eli Roth, and then just by association, his movies. Yeah, I don't even yeah. really. What's that? Because he's like a bro. That's why everybody. I don't even get that. What the hell is? Why hate him? Well, I think is he just got too mainstream. Like it, with okay. all his. Um, he has Shit. that site, doesn't he? he? He does some sort of thing. Yeah, he's got crypt the crypt yeah, thing, crypt, crypt yeah. TV or yeah. whatever. I don't know. More power to him, man. I have no beef or anything. I don't. I don't see. The I don't problem. like. I'm not. I wasn't a big fan of Green Inferno, but I like him in general. Yeah, I liked um the one with Keanu Reeves and the two girls. That not, was shit. Oh my not, god. Oh my that, god. I can mute her mic, David. Uh, no. <laughs> both, no, no, no. This is Team Sarah. Seriously, both me and Sarah are sitting there like, what, what the fuck is this film? Okay. What? Why? It was like, it was like a Tales it was from the Crypt so, episode. No, the thing was that the acting in it was so bad. Like I was just like, who who is directing this? Like because no one is directing them because they can't act for shit. And it wasn't even like sexy and like Keanu was terrible in it. I don't know what's happened to Keanu in these past like five years. He was terrible in the Neon Demon too. I think it's because they're letting him say more than like five lines. No, he's he's good in John Wick. He says like five lines in John Wick. I. <laughs> After the Neon Demon thing, I lost what you guys were even talking about. <laughs> <laughs> no, Yo, man, I can't believe you guys like not, not, not. That was shit. Like I was so disappointed. To me, I was it so angry. It felt like a long creep show or like Tales from the Crypt, like short, but like drug out into a full movie. Yeah. And I love that it didn't take itself too serious. Yeah, it was it was ridiculous the ending, like everything about it was just like Yeah, how can you hate the ending, especially where he's like trying to delete the message and accidentally likes the uh the post of him banging the two girls? The ending is all right, but like the, it, it's just the acting in it. Like I just couldn't take it. It was way too much and it was just stupid. Yeah. It wasn't like funny or anything. It was just really bad. <clears throat> Yeah. Especially not Lorenza, but the other girl. I don't, I don't even know what. The blonde chick, right? Yeah, she was. I just wanted to punch her in the face the whole movie. She's yeah, like, her... shut up, shut up. Take yeah. that knife and stick it in your throat, because I don't want to hear you talk anymore. Holy shit. Like the whole film. <laughs> we, were, we were watching. We were like eight people watching it, and no one liked it. Like no one. Like, what is? I this? have a feeling this is the exact same crowd that watched Creed. 
<laughs> <laughs> well, Kim was there too, and he hated it. So. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. Damn it. Wow. All yeah, right. No. Well. I I enjoyed Green Inferno a lot more than I did Knock Knock. Green Inferno, I liked after the initial like what I wanted it to be wore off, and then like when I got it on Blu-ray and rewatched yeah. it, I loved it. But like yeah. when we saw in the theater, I was so disappointed when we got out. Bro, I, oh I my god! I I don't like the whole, it's too, college boy, yeah, sort of. Crap. Yeah, it got like way too goofy. Yeah, some of it is really good, but some of it's like just like <clears throat> ugh, cringe. Well, cringe. I, That's the I, have, cringe. I have a funny story related to that movie, but I have to let me pull up my Twitter account real quick. Green Inferno. Yeah, I was pretty disappointed with it myself the first time. Um, I haven't given it a second chance, but um, you know, it's one of those things. You have expectations. Yeah. So you go in expecting it to be one thing. It came out like it started meeting my expectations. I was like, oh, this is gonna be the movie to dethrone Cannibal Holocaust, and I was like, oh, we're on our way. You know, with that first uh, the first kill. Hmm. And then it turned into, uh, you know, I mean, this guy's like jerking off while being choked or whatever. So Yeah, the whole, well, yeah that part I didn't understand either. And he was like jerking off. And I was like, what? I'm trying to find the actor's name. Uh, I think this, is this it? Ariel Levy? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. He's the douchebag, bad guy in a movie. <clears throat> Correct? Or I got the wrong guy? I think so. I'm pretty sure. I recognize his name. Okay, well, anyway, when the movie was over, uh, you know, I, I had to go tweet tweet about it, you know, you got cuz you think your opinions that imp, you know, important. It so is. I'm in there like, yeah. <laughs> like, damn it, I hate it and everyone else needs to know. So I went on Twitter and I tweeted Eli Roth and a bunch of cast from the movie, and he was one of them. And um I think I made like a reference in the tweet to him jerking off in the movie, and I called him a jerk off. I was like, "Oh, you're a jerk off," and he actually replied back. Um, he wrote "fap fap fap" three times in a row. That's <laughs> <laughs> his reply. So um, he almost redeemed himself with that with that Twitter reply. That was pretty cool. But yeah, I'm gonna have to rewatch it because um, knowing now what it is, I can I have my expectations expectations in check. So. Yeah. That's cool. Maybe. I might have to watch it, too. Yep. But anyway, moving on. What was the... Were that all the movies, or...? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. American Green Psycho, Infer Maniacs, yeah. House Thousand Corpses, and Hostel. Okay. David, you said yours, right? No. No. Okay, go ahead. All right. I had Wrong Turn 2. Yeah. High Tension. Oh, and shit. Inside. I haven't seen that yet. What? What? I know. It's this is life. Martyrs all over again. I've seen Martyrs. Guys, she <laughs> saw the like the shitty version of Martyrs before. I did. <laughs> I did. And I was like, this is what people's been, been on about? And Sarah was like, no. No, don't even compare the two. Yeah, it's I like comparing... And it was really good. Yeah, I was going to say, it's like comparing the Attitude Era to the PG Era. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Martyrs is a, a perfect example of that. Yeah, that that, that, that would have been like, a perfect pick. I was like super close to putting that on my list, but God, what a disappointment! Not that the movie was a disappointment; that it was made. What the remake? Yeah, the remake was a total disappointment. It was shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but I'm saying they shouldn't even have been. They shouldn't have bothered with it. No, like, even what? even the director went out and like apologized for it. Like that's how bad it was. Oh, shit. The only other time I remember that happening was like um, Batman and Robin, Joel Schumacher, and George Clooney had to uh, apologize for it. All right, folks, welcome back. Sorry about the interruption again. Um, another baby, baby emergency. Um, not sure if Jasmine's gonna join us for the rest of this. Um, so it's going to be me and David wrapping this up and uh, you know, finishing up a talk about the uh, three eras of horror as we have them, the uh, PG era, Golden Age of horror, and the Attitude era. So if you guys are familiar with wrestling, then you pretty much have an idea of 
what those three eras entail. But um, we were just finishing with uh, the Attitude Era and are going to quickly run through the list we have for our PG Era Horror. Um, my list, the first one I have here is uh, Insidious, which uh, if you heard earlier, Jasmine was surprised that that was even a PG-13 movie because it's so scary. This is from someone who watches Itchy the Killer to uh, fall asleep. So I don't get that shit. Then <laughs> we got Drag Me to Hell, The uh, Woman in Black, 10 Cloverfield Lane, and Warm Bodies. So that is my, those are my top five PG era horror. So horror movies that are not rated R that wish they were. What you got, David? Now thinking about mine, I think Jennifer's body actually is rated R, but it still is kind of light, so mm -hmm. it belongs. So I got Jennifer's body, Paranormal Activity, the first one, mm -hmm. Insidious, Krampus, and Drag Me to Hell. Krampus is so underrated, man. Yeah. That's definitely, like, in the past couple of years, like, one of the best, like, modern horror movies to come out. I've, like, but, yeah, no, you're right. And it's now made the rotation on my, like, uh, Christmas watch. You know, the movies I watched at Christmas time. Yeah. That one is with there, is right up there with Gremlins for me now. Actually, I don't, I don't remember if you remember, but I kind of bashed Gremlins. I didn't like it the last time I had seen it. Yeah, and, you said uh, it up. Yeah, I just didn't hold up for me. So it, Krampus may just replace it overall. I don't know. We'll see how the kids feel about it. But yeah, that's the uh, <clears throat> the PG era. Except Krampus is a damn good movie, man. PG-13 or not. Well, these all are. That's the whole point. But It's like perfect entry-level horror. It really is. We watched that as a family. And I'm talking about we have people who aren't can't stand horror movies that were loving it. As soon as it was over, they were just like, damn, what a movie. So, yeah, pe more people need to get on that, on the Krampus train. But, um, yeah, that's it for the the three eras of horror. I know we fit the comfort horror, which is not really an era, just a type that I feel like uh, a lot of people probably have movies in that category, just didn't know what the hell comfort horror or how to, you know, word it, what kind of movies these are. So there you go, guys. Comfort horror, but we're the ones that coined it. So then uh, moving on, <clears throat> we're kind of up against the wall here on time. So one announcement is that locally, Gods and Monsters will be uh, moving to a new location. Or actually, they have moved to a new location. They'll be opening up, let's see, end of this month, right? I think like February 27th or something. Yeah, I think they said the end of the month. Like in a couple weeks. A yeah. Week for those that don't know, they're like a kind of uh, uh, like a hobby shop, uh, you know, for people who are into, oh, man, anything you could think of, man, like comic books, video games, uh, horror movies, uh, action movies, this, this, that, and the other. You know, they've they've got uh, a comic book, a toy, or you know, shirt, or some kind of memorabilia for something you like, pretty much, and. Um, they're uh, a great contributor to the community in general, the horror community especially. They were hosting the, um, what was it, the Spooky Empire's refugee thing. That, save Our Spooky. Yeah, Save Our Spooky. So that was freaking awesome. Th that was amazing. It was, you know, obviously not the venues, not as big as having that uh, Orange County Convention Center, but shit, man, it was something. And uh, we had a good time last year, so it's good. I'm glad. I'm glad that we didn't lose them when the mall closed down. So uh, we'll be we'll be take, taking Jasmine over there uh, March 4th or 3rd. We'll see. It'll be her first time uh, visiting the place. So shout out to Gods and Monsters. We'll be visiting you guys soon. Um, also, we have no name still for this podcast. I don't know what the hell is going to happen with that. We don't have a name. We don't have a logo. Um, I'm not going to be too hard on myself. It's only episode three. So, shit, we got time. It'll come. It'll come. The podcast. I actually was like, dude, I was toying with the idea of, um, what the hell was it? Uh, you know Game of Thrones, the, the, the girl has no name. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I was going to like, a podcast has no name. <laughs> 
Yo, there's a freaking podcast already. A podcast has no name. I was going to say, and it's probably all Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, I didn't check to see, but I wouldn't be surprised. There's I'd about 50 Game of Thrones podcasts. <clears throat> yeah, seriously. Holy shit, hold on. My phone's blowing up over here. It looks like Nick. <laughs> Our buddy is... uh. Blowing up my phone with a, he's got a job opportunity outside the state. Anyway, off topic. We'll have to talk about that offline, David. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that's it. I mean, I wanted to talk about the women in horror stuff more. Um, I'd hate to just, like, cram it in to the end of this. You know, what with this being Women in Horror Month. So I want to, you know, pay it respect and, and give it its own podcast from beginning to end. So probably the next one, I think the next one will be dedicated 100% to women in horror. Um, movies, upcoming movies, directors, actors, everything in between, the blood drive, all that good stuff. So that'll be good. So yeah, and uh, we still got to get a name. I'll put it out there. Hopefully you guys uh, who are listening could give us some ideas maybe. That'd be nice. But, uh, yeah, that's it. That's all we got for this episode, pretty much. You have anything else to add? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that's it. It's going to end uh, anticlimactically with Jasmine uh, MIA. So we'll uh, see you guys in the next one. And until then, stay safe and stay horrific. Later. <laughs>